Good morning, everybody. It's so wonderful to be here at our weekly Parsha class, our weekly Chumash class, learning the wisdom of Rav Wolbe on Chumash, my, my great, uh, awesome, amazing, uh, brilliant grandfather and his teachings. Uh, <clears throat> so in this, and as many of you know, as you see right behind me, we're in the middle of our fundraising campaign, but Torah never stops. Torah never stops. So all of our friends, you're welcome to join us and contribute to our campaign. Mm -hmm. We look forward to your participation and support. So in this week's Parsha, we have the teaching of what happens with the Metzor, with, with, with someone who gets leprosy, and Negatzarat, if, uh, if there is an affliction of the skin. And what's really amazing is that we learn from this the cause and effect. You know, what is the fundamental principle that we learn throughout the entire Torah? You know, if the Torah was a book of laws, then all we need is give me the laws and that's it. But instead, we don't have laws alone. It's not a book of law number one, law number two, law number three. The first 15 portions of the Torah are stories. The story of creation, the story of Cain, Cain, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Noah, the flood, Tower of Babel, Right? Abraham, etc., etc. We have so many, so many stories going on in the Torah. And, and what is the purpose of those stories? We have the tribes, selling of Joseph, Egypt. Just give us the laws. If the Torah is a book of laws, a book of instruction, just give me the laws. So there's a fundamental principle that's far more important than just the laws. And that is understanding the concept of reward and punishment. There is a cause and effect for everything that happens in this world. We do something, there's, there, you do an action, there's a reaction. If a person is kind and generous, there's a reaction. What's the reaction? The reaction is a reward that, that's promised by God. A person who honors their father and mother, there's a promise in the Torah they will live a long life. Right? There is a cause and effect for everything that happens in this world. And one of the things we see is in this week's Parsha, we have the cause and effect of someone who speaks Lashon HaRa, someone who says something that is inappropriate, there's going to be an impact. What's the impact? You'll have something that comes on your skin. You need to go to the Kohen. You may need to be... right. In, He's going to make a marking to see if it if it grows, etc. The whole the whole process of how the, the leprosy works, and how we 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 we're able to calculate at first is understanding its coloring, understanding what the background and the reason for it is. But there is a cause and effect. I think it's the most important piece of information we need to know about the Torah. There's nothing that just happens random. There's nothing that just happens random. I want to share with you. Yesterday in our class, I'm looking for the book. It looks like the book has been cleared away. But um, um, it's a good thing someone's returning the books to the library. That's great. <laughs> so at the, at the amazing Torch Center, right? At the, at the, at the Levitt Family Library. So we have, um, we have a verse in the Torah, chapter 31, Deuteronomy, verse 17, I think. And it's an amazing verse. The verse says that there will come a time where the Jewish people will go against me and I will, they will turn their back to me and go to alien gods and in turn, I will turn my back against them. It's a verse in the Torah. Mm -hmm. I'd make this up. Want to see it? I remember reading it. Hmm? You don't believe me? Yeah. It's okay. Okay. I'll show it to you. I can show it to you. Right? You want to show it to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep shaking you want to show it to us? You want to see it? Sure. Okay. One second. My friends, we're just going to get a book from the library. So, mm -hmm. 
It's uh, verse 16, sorry. Chapter 31, verse 16 in Deuteronomy. Okay? And it says as follows. Chapter 31, verse 16. You ready? I'll read it in the English. Hashem said to Moses, Behold, you will lie with your forefathers, but this people will rise up and stray after the gods of the foreigners of the land, in whose midst it is coming, and it will forsake me and annul my covenant that I have sealed with it. My anger will flare against it on that day, and I will forsake them. I will conceal my face from them, and they will become prey, and many evils and distresses will encounter it. It will say on that day, it is not because my God is not in my, in my midst that these evils have come upon me, but I will surely have concealed my face on that day because of all the evils that it did, for it had turned to gods of others. Okay? I want to read to you a... Oh, sorry. Okay. Anybody know how codes work? Bible codes. So the way Bible codes work is they move away all the spaces. Okay. So there's no more spaces, and all you have is the three hundred and four thousand eight hundred and five letters of the Torah, with no spaces. Okay. And then they'll put in a word, and it will find a sequence that builds that word. Could happen, it could not happen. If you try it on any book in the world, 99.99999% it will not work. There's only one book that it works on Torah. So they put in the word Hashoah, which is the Holocaust. Do you know where the Hashoah word only one time it shows up in the entire Tanakh in a sequence? Do you know where it showed up in these verses? In these verses. The ones you just read? The ones I just read. In Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 31, 16. Okay. Let me say something else. Is that this is from a book, a published book, about the Holocaust. It says the following. The quintessential element that distinguishes this event, the Holocaust, was the search for God. Every Jew who remained in the ghettos and the camps remembers the God syndrome that shrouded everything else. From morning till night, we cried out for a sign that God was still with us. We sought him, but we did not find him. We were always accompanied by a crushing and unsettling feeling that God had disappeared from our midst. So the Torah tells us, meaning there's, there's, there is a cause and effect. We don't, it's, it's hard for us to understand this. Now, I was just last week in Poland, and I was in Auschwitz one week ago, today, Thursday. I was in Auschwitz, and I spent the day there. Auschwitz and uh, Auschwitz A and B, Birkenau as well. And it's hard to imagine the atrocities that happened. It's it just, it's not, it's not normal. I show, was showing my children the barracks, okay? And each one of them can fit probably, probably, I don't know, the way they put them in there, in order, in, in, those, in those bunks, right? They probably fit a thousand people in each in each barracks. Do you know how many of those there were? You're talking about almost a hundred thousand people. Almost a hundred thousand people, and they were going. They could they couldn't keep up with the volume. They couldn't kill them fast enough. My grandparents were in that camp. Right, two of my grandparents were in Auschwitz right there. And I stood in the place, we sang, Anima Amin, we believe, right in the same exact spot where they did the selection. Where the train stopped and they got right off the train and they went right or left. Just at a random selection. You live, you die. You live, you die. And those who lived, most of them died anyway. And we think to ourselves, how can such atrocities happen? We don't have the answers. We only have hints. And there's nothing that we can ever do that can make us feel comfortable with this. 
We have to understand there is a cause and effect. And we're accountable for our good deeds, we're rewarded, and we're accountable for our negative deeds, and we're punished. And sometimes the punishment could be harsh. And again, we don't know. I'm not saying that there's, that this is, is no, no one's going to walk out of a conversation about the Holocaust saying, you know what, I really like that. Right? right? At the end of the day, the atrocities are too great for anyone to feel comfortable with it. We have to understand that there is, and again, this is a lesson that we, we, we could learn from this week's Parsha when we talk about the, 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 the tzarat, the, the leprosy. It was a punishment for something that was done. Right? It was a punishment for something that was done. And uh, we should never be tested in such a way. But we should hopefully, if we are tested, be very, very successful in succeeding and doing what's right in the eyes of Hashem. And we should be blessed. It's a very, very good life. We should have a tremendous amount of nachas from all of our children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and see them grow in their Judaism, grow in their, in their relationship with Hashem, grow in their observance of mitzvahs. And that's, that's for us the most important thing of, of, uh, of living our lives. So, before we sign off, I just want to remind our friends, you can go to charity.com, C-H-A-R-I-D-Y.com, find the Torch campaign, and please donate. Every dollar that you donate till 7 p.m. tonight is quadrupled. And what I've seen a couple of people do, very, very interestingly, is that they set up a recurring payment. So, so someone told me, he says, I can't, I can't donate a lot, but I can donate $25 a month. And they put on a recurring payment that's $300, quadrupled, it becomes $1,200. That's from a $25 a month of donation. So if anyone can help, I appreciate everyone has already contributed. I'm deeply grateful. Thank you very, very much. If you haven't yet, to our friends online, Thank you very much for participating in our campaign. And don't forget the Torah never stops. We've got to continue our class. Have a great day, everyone.